Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. This guitar is the most expensive one I have ever unboxed on the channel. And it's like the third or fourth most expensive guitar that I have ever bought. You know, even before I was doing these unboxing series, it's brand new from Sweetwater. I pulled you guys about it. It came out about an 80-20 split between yes and no. I'm both nervous and really excited to unbox this monstrosity. But I knew if I didn't document this guitar, sure as heck nobody else is going to do it because they're just way too expensive. And the only videos that probably would have existed on this piece would have just been the fluff ones from Gibson and stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. You know it's a big purchase when Sweetwater sends you not one, but three packets of candy. Thank you guys. I can see I got my Laffy Taffy fix. I love those things. So here we go. Oh, that's a big box. <laughs> Even the FedEx man, when he delivered this, he said, wow, that's a heavy box. And I can definitely see what he's talking about. I'm just hoping it arrived okay, because there's quite a bit of, oh, there's a bonus candy in here. <laughs> My five figure purchase got me some candy. I don't think I've seen a case like this from Gibson before. What could possibly be in this? Giant rectangle case that weighs a ton. Well, it says Gibson on it. One, two, three. <laughs> oh my, the Slash Double Neck EDS 1275. I have never been in the same room as a double neck guitar, so this thing is doubly as exciting for me. These things are $13,299. <laughs> but you know, in person, it's not quite as intimidating as I thought it was going to be. I kept trying to imagine playing a double necked guitar. And it just wasn't adding up in my head. Like, how are you even supposed to hold this thing? But they're, they're a little bit more closer together than I thought. Let's just hope it didn't get broken. Oh, this is weird. So these are signed and aged. Not aged by Slash, but they are signed by Slash. Uh, let's, let's check these. Oh, no. Did, no, just kidding guys. That's part of the aging process. I, I'm not sure, does his have a headstock repair and that's why they did that? Because I really could not find a photo of like Slash and his original like documentations of it. I actually uh, reached out to him and asked him, hey, do you have any photos of your original one? But I don't think he would ever see that message anyways. But you know, as far as aging jobs go from Gibson, I've got to say this looks a little bit better than what I've seen before. I mean, they're trying to replicate uh, moisture damage. That's what it usually means when it's up and down. I mean, you can clearly tell it's an aging job, but an aging job, I think it looks pretty cool. This, this is strange holding two guitars at once. <laughs> you feel like such a rock star with this thing. And it's still in tune after being shipped to me. Man. <laughs> what have I gotten myself into this time, guys? You will enjoy the full review and demo of this one. This is an insanely cool piece. 
But our Sweetwater fun doesn't end there. This was something I had to buy out of necessity, unfortunately. So Fender Friday, I was doing that Stratocaster, right? And I noticed my amp, I was on Distorted Channel, it just faded down to nothing but clean tones. But then it faded back up into distorted tones. And I was like, huh, you know, maybe my tubes have finally gone bad. Because I was always curious, you know, when would they go bad? Or should I replace it or not? So I kind of put this off just until my amp was kind of on the fritz. Now, thankfully, I turned it off and I just gave it a break and then it ended up working again. But obviously, I think it's time to replace the tubes, right? That gives us a grand total of five candies. It looks like they were only packing cherry Laffy Taffies that day. <laughs> that and a banana. Some people don't like the banana ones, but I do. Now, it kind of scares me a little bit, as I mean, you could see this box was visibly abused. So being glass, I hope these are okay. So these guys look all right. So I got a uh, two EL84s and then six of these guys, the 12 AX7s. So that is a bunch of tubes. Let's go ahead and get my amp and see if we can figure this out. Not really sure what I'm doing here. And that's not necessarily a good way to go into an amp because I know you can really give yourself a bad shock if you touch a capacitor that hasn't been drained. But I think if we're just swapping out tubes, we should be okay. Well, it turns on, that's a good sign. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Well, that doesn't sound good. Let's see if the second time's the charm. I think I just had the tubes not in right. I put it back to my bench, I wiggled things around. I found out that little cage could just come off and would have made my life a lot easier. But I think we're up and running with fresh tubes now. <laughs> It didn't take long for a bunch of offers to come rolling in. It's the Root Beer Les Paul Standard. It sold within like 36 hours of the video. But the first offer came in, it was like uh, 1435 plus 65 shipping. So 1500 total, and that, that wasn't gonna cut it. But the reason why he couldn't go anymore is because the whole sales tax thing kept us from, you know, making the deal. But I also had a few other interesting offers. There was a guy, I believe it was in Germany, he wanted this, but I can't ship, you know, a rosewood fretboarded instrument until December. I'm gonna wait until December 1st. I know it's like the end of November, like November 22nd or 23rd, something like that. Because you don't know, all the custom agents might not be on the same page and might destroy your guitar anyways. But yeah, root beer finish. I don't love it. I don't hate it, I'm just kind of neutral on it. But I definitely liked this one because it's flamey, but it's also got the wood crane at the same time. And now we're saying goodbye to this Cherry Sunburst Custom. I never did a review on this one because it ended up being kind of a headache. A lot more replaced parts than the guy originally thought. Turns out he actually likes the show, so instead of returning it, I was just like, okay, I'll just sell it break even. But this one is actually, I think, going to end up in Ukraine, which is kind of a 
long way to go. A dealer over there was trying to source a guitar for one of his clients, and this just happened to be the cheapest one on the market. He kept trying to get it cheaper and cheaper. He's like, nope, I, I know what I've got here, buddy, and I know you can still make some money on it too. And now for our last boxing of the day. In the previous episode to this one of unboxing, I did a I'm selling all my Gibson Switch and Defender thing for Fender Friday. And I showed that I had this thing. And this is the logo off of a Generation 3 chainsaw case. These things are known to pop off. I mean, they were just glued on there. They weren't a permanent structure by any means. And there's lots of people looking for these things. I just happened to have them because sometimes they would fall off a case or they'd just be included in the case. I just kept it because I thought it was a cool little decoration. I uh, hung it up on my wall with some of that like blue putty tape. That's what you can kind of see right there. But somebody reached out and said, hey, I need that. Here's my money. So we need to pack this up for him today. I certainly had fun today. I hope you guys did too. We'll see you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.